cloud here we go welcome this is the fifth the sixth of july 2022 this is google summer of code the git cache maintenance um project and Husha Cash, one of the things that I've got is I have added your account to home.markweight.net. Um, okay, with I've the, when did you add that? Oh. Uh, minutes ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, and I didn't remember the account that you, you wanted, so I added one with this username. I put it in the chat. Oh, uh, I was thinking today's meet we would do, like, uh, uh, you know, find the Git versions. You know, you know, on your computer itself, you know, so that we figure it out. Great. Uh, because I haven't done anything the past one week. The only thing I added was, you know, getting the Git version and the Git plugin. And uh, yeah, that, that was the only thing. So Because okay, I well, didn't have access to the, yeah. All right. Well, uh, so let's, let's be sure that you have access. My apologies that I blocked your work. Let's be sure that you have access and we'll do that during today's session. So tell me again the username you prefer. I added one username, but if that username does, isn't the comfortable one that you're, that you're accustomed to, tell me the username you prefer and I'll create yeah. that one. I, I, I sent. Okay, uh, got it. And uh, you're okay than, if I do? Uh, you know, uh, rather than uh, creating username, can we like just figure it out on your computer right now? Because the, I realize there are only three uh, maintenance tasks version which I would be needing because okay. pre because prefetch isn't supported for versions less than two point three zero according to like what I have seen, and lose objects also isn't supported. So the other commands which we would be needing are you know, a uh, commit graph GC and uh, multi packs index. So. Okay, well let's let's do it then. Let's let's take a moment and. If you're okay with it, I'm just gonna gonna share my screen, and we're going to do the exercise. You can you can guide, and we'll make it happen. Do you see? Let's see. Whoops. Share screen. You should see my screen now. It should have a web browser on it. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So let's go to. And prior to the meeting, I had prepped by starting. Um, a wide collection of agents. So we've got uh, CentOS 7, Red Hat 8, Oracle Linux 8, Debian 11, Debian 10, FreeBSD 13, SUSE 15, Ubuntu 18, 20, 21, and 22, FreeBSD 12, Windows, um, Ubuntu something on PowerPC, and Ubuntu something else on System 390, and a bunch of of others, Raspberry Pis, etc. So we've got a, a pretty reason. Oh, and Debian testing. So we've got a, a reasonable collection of operating systems. Okay, now what, what you wanted to let's let's walk through the, the 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 task that you would like to do. So you want to iterate over every client, every agent, report the Git version number, and then which which, based on the version, you know, we can figure out whether, you know, we can execute that maintenance task or not. Okay. All right. So, all right. So let's create, let's create a job that does that. And if I remember right, we had one. Okay, it was yes, get get maintenance help. And this thing, and all we did, if I remember right, was we copied this and made ourselves a, uh, a job that would answer the questions we wanted so that we could iterate on it, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's do this. So get, get maintenance exploration okay so pipeline and let's just use label as the stage name and first things first i want to watch it pass 
So I'm just going to report Git version, nothing else. And we'll take J agent. So we'll take all the agents. Now let's see what agents it actually does. So it's collecting many. Now, why would that fail? Hmm. That's a strange thing to see. Failed in branch. Hmm. Well, we'll see soon enough. Okay, so where did it fail? I'm not seeing obviously where it failed. Okay. Failed in branch on Ubuntu 20D that I don't see that as an obvious failure because it says okay, maybe we have to ask it a different question. Okay, it's still waiting to run on this computer, but that computer is rather busy right now, I suspect, because it's the only Windows computer in the set. So let's give it more executors. And it immediately took all of them. Poor thing will have difficulty carrying that heavy of a load, but let's try it. There was another way of, you know, going through this process, like uh, implementing this. I was thinking, you know, uh, uh, rather than using the versions, I can call each command using the get client, uh, you know, tool. And if it throws an exception, then I can figure it out myself, whether I can, you know, you run that maintenance task or not. So I'm not sure which is the better way. So, And, and either... Either would be fine. I've because the the knowledge of which versions implement which com which which commands is static. I've rather preferred to go the direction of having a table that tells me, or having code logic in the plugin that tells me which thing is is implemented and which is not. But but I'm open to either. Uh, that that would your your technique would also be fine. The, the challenge with that is it means you're going to call, you will call command line git to ask the same question over and over again on yeah. an agent where you, you probably know the answer. Um, I just have a question. I, now, when we are trying to install a, um, a git version on Jenkins, I believe we specify the version at the time when we're trying to install it. So isn't that stored in the context of the git tool itself? Uh, the version um, in the installation of the Git tool. Uh, I, it's a good question. I don't remember. Uh, I, it's that's a very good question because there certainly is a. Uh, let's look to see how it's implemented. Um, I was checking the Git tool class uh, uh -huh. to see if something like that. So I see that there's a name, there's an home associated to it, which is the directory the directory where it would be installed. Then there is something called a concept of properties. Yeah, I need to investigate deeper if this 
we could get those properties or we could get the version out of them. So there's a there's a function, there's a method, get git version. And it starts with a static, no, with a private value, get version that is a long set to zero, then it gets computed. And if it's non-zero, it's not recomputed. So for the lifetime of this object, it calls once and remembers. Now it's not for the lifetime of an agent, just for the lifetime of this object. Does that answer your question, Rishab? Um, no, but here we are actually executing the version command to get the version, right? But not- Once, that's correct. Yeah, I mean, this works. My, I thought that we would have stored this information while we create a git tool uh, within the, within the context, that is what I assume, but I don't see it. It's not as obvious because I don't see it declared anywhere. Yeah. So, yeah I, 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 so when you say, when you say get tool, you really mean get tool, this object, right? Yes. So this is an abstraction of the actual installation that I would have, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it would contain the name if it's a JGate implementation or a Git implementation, a CLI Git implementation. I would know from this object. Right. Well, if but I it, get the default one. But it doesn't know the the Git version. As that far as correct. far as I can see, it doesn't have any anything that talks about version, does it? That's right. I don't see it. I mean, it, it could be taught to know about versions, but CLI, really, there isn't a version concept on JGit. So I had assumed that it that CLI Git was a reasonable place to put the version knowledge. But, but and it, it certainly is cached there in the sense that anytime I instantiate a CLI Git API mm -hmm. implementation, it will call this once and then future use of that instance will, will rem remember the cached value. Oh. And when I add a new, or uh, you know, get uh, you know, get tool like you know another Git version, would this thing get updated, or would it be the same? Well, so a a, a CLI Git API implementation is using a specific Git tool, if I remember correctly, and therefore it will it will for the lifetime of this object have one and only one Git version because it's assuming that you aren't changing the executable Git to which it is pointing to some different version. Did, did that answer your question? Yeah, because I added, uh, you know, Git, I added the logic to get the Git version and this thing uh, runs, you know, whenever I'm executing a maintenance task. So whenever I'm going to schedule a maintenance task, when it's added into the queue and when I'm removing it from the queue, then I go get the Git version, like what exactly is the version and then, you know, execute the task based on the version. So, I mean, it would be, so if you have multiple Git tools in your environment, you would get the inst instances and from those objects, you could get version for each, right? That would not be a problem. Here we, oh, here we decided to go with the default tool, right? Uh, like I and Mark, we discussed in the previous meet. Like yeah, we yeah, that, just that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I, said, I saw that. I was just saying that even if you had yeah. multiple ones, you you would get the CLI Git implementation for the tool that you're using. Dot Git X yeah. would give you that implementation and you would get the particular version for that implementation when you're trying to yes. call it. Okay, wait, I have a doubt right now. Okay, after this, like uh, uh, the version, which the, so the logic which I have written, I'm not sure if that is the same tool which I am getting is, I'm not sure whether that thing gives the default get version present on Jenkins controller. 
because I've taken it from a test file, like, uh, and then I've added that logic. So I'm not sure if that's going to return the default tool, which we are using in. To well, run let's, a... let's, let's do a, I think we can check that interactively. Can't we, if we were to install a copy of your, your development copy of the plugin on this Jenkins installation, we should be able to watch the logs and see what it says. Sure. What, does that seem okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So do we want to proceed with the, the attempt to determine which versions of Git have which capabilities? Because for me, I think, I think there's some benefit to knowing that just to capture it, even if you were to choose later to, oh, I'm going to determine it dynamically on the, at runtime. I, I would be needing this information to, you know, run the maintenance also. Okay, so then let's let's take a look at it. What we see now is here's the output. It shows us each each of these is what it's running. Now we probably also need to know something like what the computer's operating system version number is, right? That kind of thing. So so let's configure this job to give us a little more information, like uname minus a, and then um, if let's see, how do we do it? Is there a cat command that says ignore? Ignore, don't fail if, okay. Is there an ignore errors? There is not. Okay, unfortunate. All right, so cat. So let's do it like this. You name minus a if minus f slash etc slash os dash release. Then cat slash etc slash os slash release. Okay, git minus minus version. Okay, what else? So git, let's, should we try that much? Let's see if we, oh, and then on the, on the Windows side, it'll always be Windows, we know that. So that's easy, build now. Okay, voila. So here we are on Ubuntu 18. So are you okay if I start a table? Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, so Google Drive. All right, so is there an easy way to do a table in our document? Table. Okay, what do we need? We need to know the operating system name, operating system version, command line git version. So oh, I need a spreadsheet. Sorry, let's just get a real spreadsheet so I don't have to worry about how many columns it has. New sheet. Okay, so first, operating system version. Git version, and then it's, you said the maintenance tasks include GC, would GC all of them have, right? So there was prefetch, there was... Uh, uh, are you uh, like listing all the maintenance tasks? Just the ones that we need to, we need to decide, is it implemented in this version or not? Okay, commit graph, and then uh, incremental repack, and uh, GC. 
Okay, incremental repack. And we know that GC is implemented. Every, every, oh no, but you're right. The maintenance GC is the question. Is that right? The, uh, maintenance GC, I thought we would run the, you know. Just run the GC. GC. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then that's implemented in all of them. There's no, uh, the, there's no command line Git that lacks a Git GC as far as I know. Okay, and uh, we we have to con like can we confirm about the prefetch command once because I'm not when I tried it wasn't there so absolutely okay so let's and let's list our operating system so we've got Ubuntu and it's eighteen oh four. Twenty oh four. Okay, then we've got Debian. And here we've got ten because nine is no longer supported. Eleven and Debian, the version that they call testing. Oh, you silly thing, right align. There we go, okay. All right, now. Then we've got um, CentOS 7. Uh, Red Hat. Eight Oracle Linux eight and which others do we have in this mix? Oh, Raspbian eleven. So we'll see. We may have more than that, but let's grab those. Okay, first, Edamame is Ubuntu 18, if I remember correctly. So it's going to tell us Ubuntu 18 and the Git version is 2.17.1. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, now, and then to decide, do we have prefetch? The way we we would do that, Rishikesh, is we would call maintenance prefetch. Uh no, no. Or get uh prefetch. Uh, sorry, get fetch and then uh dash dash, you know, prefetch. Okay. I, so... I send the link in the in chat. Oh, good. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so get fetch minus minus prefetch. Okay, so what we need is we're going to need a repository that we can use for this. So let's get one. Like, uh, couldn't we just like run and check whether or get fetch dash dash prefetch exists or not? We can, but I think it will fail because it okay. fetch assumes the existence of a repository. I think, but let's try it. Oh, yeah, it's a good yeah. idea. Okay, how are we doing there? Open Blue Ocean. And the output says fatal, not a given repository. Yeah. But that's still, that should be pretty easy for us to, to fix that. Let's, let's do that fix. Because we've got a working directory, we can just say, git init. And we can say git remote add origin. Now 
Now let's see if that was the right thing. Nope, apparently not. What mistake did I make? Unknown option prefetch. Oh, okay. Well, that's actually the, the expected thing. Okay, good. So we can look at this one and see if any... Oh, no, that's odd. None of them recognize get prefetch and the Windows one even shows as a failure why would the okay the or the windows one is not in my list ah ah right right is it there is no windows at all so i've made a mistake in this job definition let's do a quick configuration j agent or windows Let's just say Linux or Windows or FreeBSD. So git fetch minus minus prefetch. And so if that's the case, well, let's try it again. Why would, I mean, git fetch minus minus prefetch should have been successful, shouldn't it? On at least yeah. one of these. It should be running successfully on the 2.30 version at least. Like, yeah. Um, okay, so let's look for 2.30. So here's one that has 2.30. Ah, it says remote origin already exists. Oh, right, right, because I'm trying to, okay, that's okay. So we, we need to make a minor change there to ignore the failure if remote, if, if origin already exists. We do that by saying like that. Okay, unknown option prefetch. Remote HTTP, oh, oh, how embarrassing. Look at that typo. Okay, so that's why it failed because I made a mistake. I didn't point it. <laughs> My bad. So here's what we do here is we use a real URL with a real protocol. And let's clean the workspace. I think it's clean WS, isn't it? Clean WS. Okay, good. Okay, unknown option prefetch, git minus minus version 2.31, unknown. Okay, but you said 2.30 should have prefetch. Yeah. Okay, so when it I, says. Yeah. I don't see it there. Okay, well, let's keep looking. Here's 2.35. And 2.35 definitely does have it. So maybe it's not 2.30. 30 but let's let's see okay so this says we've got that we should have at least a few pass should 
show me blue ocean. Yes, here we go. Okay, so the brand new ones, the three that are on FreeBSD, Ubuntu 21, 22, and the FreeBSD 12 and Debian testing. So there are some that are passing. So that's a plus. So I think we can collect our data now, at least for, for prefetch. So let's, um, let's do that with Blue Ocean. It's easy enough to see. So here with this Windows computer, I think the version, oh, 2.36, I don't, I didn't do the Git prefetch. So we don't know that one yet, just a minute. So Windows, and on Windows, it was 2.36, oops. This is Windows 11. Prefetch, we expect yes, right? Full support. And now back to our page. No, not this one. Okay. So Debian testing is running command line git version 2.35.1. Okay, so 2.35, and there it did the fetch. So 2.35.1, yes, prefetch. And we're quite confident that So Edamame is 1804, it's git 2.17.1, and it has no git prefetch. Oh, uh, because uh, git maintenance, I think, has been released in 2.30. So, so that's that's yeah. that's consistent with what you what you're expecting, then. That's good. Yeah. So let's look at others. So CentOS 7. The Git version is 1.8.3.1. Oh my sakes, that's ancient. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> CentOS 7 is from the dark ages of Git. Okay, 1.8.3.1, and we can easily put no, 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 no. right? And yeah. if prefetch is not there, did commit well, let's let's do the rest of the research. Okay, next stop then is Ubuntu 20. And an Ubuntu 20 machine like this one. Here's Ubuntu 20, and it says it doesn't have prefetch and it's running git 2.25.1. Uh, these are the default Git versions, right? Present on those machines? On on these, yeah, the, the Linux operating, operating system. systems yeah. have a, tend to have a, tend to ship a version. And most of the ones that I've seen anyway, uh, choose to not do major, do changes to the minor number even. They will do a 2.17.2 .2 or 3, but they won't change to 2.18, okay. that kind of thing. And we said no on prefetch here. Okay, now let's go the next level. So this was Ubuntu 21. Okay, so 21 is here. And it passed. And so we expect that it's, okay, it's 2.32.0. And the answer there was yes. And we fully expect 22.04 to be the same thing. And it is 2.34.1. Okay, and the answer is yes, it has prefetch. Debian, Debian 10. So here's Debian 10, it failed. So we expect that the answer here is no. And it is get 2.20.1. Oh, 
the expectation here is that we're going to encode this information within the GIF plugin. Well, that was that was my assumption, so that we know whether or not we dare call for prefetch. Yeah, but but as Git versions, if, so if that is going to be a reference point to decide if we want to execute the maintenance task or not, a particular maintenance task, then uh, if I don't have a version there, because that list would grow as Git versions come out, right? Or you would have some kind of, um, I mean, you would say that if it's greater than this, then you would obviously yeah. execute it. That's, that's how it's been done elsewhere in the, in the Git client is it, it asks questions like is, is at least, is the Git version at least this version? And it's assumed that once a feature is added, it is never removed. That's right. Now, now, it, well, I, I, thus far, it's a fair assumption. I, I, you know, we we reserve the right to always have have them decide. Hey, we've had to drop this capability because it was a a total disaster, or it was a it was unacceptably bad performance, or who knows. Okay, so two dot thirty dot two on Debian eleven failed, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Okay, so that was a no for prefetch. Okay, and then Red Hat eight. And I don't think that Rushikesh, you need to encode the operating system at all. Yeah, it's just yeah. all we all we care about is the Git version. Version. Okay, two point thirty one point one also does not have prefetch. Now that's strange. So now we have to check whether it runs maintenance task. Like um, the, uh, it would run right maintenance like the Git maintenance command i don't know yeah that's the let's we'll do so we i think you're right we need to check for we need to put one more column in here right which is maintenance so is maintenance even available yeah the document does state it in 2.30 but still you know. right right and 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 i thought i thought that i i expect fully expected it would be there. Okay, so here's Oracle Linux 8 and it's running 2.31.1 as well. Okay, that's good because it's supposed to be a clone of Red Hat. All right, and then Raspbian 11. Let's see if I've got one there. Do I have a Pi? I don't, none of my pies were selected. Okay, because they are not listed as Linux. Just a minute, I have to do one more thing then. So the Raspberry Pis call themselves, uh, oh, ARM, okay, good. Okay, let's look at it again. Here we go. So Pi 4, which is running Debian Raspbian 11, and it's 2.30.2. And it told us no, is that right? Yeah, it said no. no. Okay. And then Oracle Linux was also a no. Okay, yeah. now we want to.
All right. So then we want to check git maintenance. Same trick, right? Yeah. And once we do maintenance, I think I can continue this process because now I have understood how to use it. So I oh, can good. Really, okay. Yeah. Okay. So so are you okay? That means we'll need to during this session, we'll need to be sure we get you access to this machine. You're okay yeah. with that, and we'll do that. Good. All right. Okay. So let's do maintenance minus minus help. And let's use a smaller repository for the clone, shall we? Just a minute. We don't really need to put that much load on GitHub. Find something small and public. Now, is there a way to sort by size? No. Hmm. Here's a small one. Okay, so back here to our Okay. All right, so that ran something. So 36, yes, 1804, no, CentOS 7, no, Debian 10, no, Debian 11, yes. So 18 was no, Debian 10 was no, Debian 11 we said was yes, right? Yeah. Interesting. So it doesn't have fetch minus minus prefetch, but it does have git maintenance. Yes. Okay. So I think they added a command, you know, in the next version. The interesting. Prefetch. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's very interesting. All right. Okay. So um let's keep looking and Let's see how about so 1804 was ubuntu 1804 was no cento 7 is no uh okay let's keep looking oh oh we didn't do susie sorry another one susie 15a is what version it is Get 2.34.1. Okay. And it was a yes. Oh, whoops, no. Yes, it was, yes, it was yes on both. Okay, yeah. good. All right. Ubuntu 20 is a no. Is that correct? 18 and 20 are both no. 21 and 22 are yes. Okay. 20 is a no. 21 is a yes, 22 is a yes. And Debian testing is, I'm confident, a yes. Let's be sure of that. Yeah, it is a yes. Okay, Red Hat is also a yes with its 2.31.1. Interesting, another case where we have a yes to maintenance, but a no to prefetch. And Raspbian was yes. OK. 
Okay, all right. And we know that Windows, well, actually, let's check it. That's a good question. Is Windows actually supporting Git maintenance? Yeah, it, it does. It does. It does. Okay. You've already verified that? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay. All right. So the next stop then was we wanted to try. You want to try commit graph? I can do that, you know, we can, you know. Okay, then let's, discuss. Then, let's yeah. then let's configure. So I'm gonna share this sheet with you, Rusha Cash. Okay. And uh, anyone with the link and give you editor permission and Rishab. All right. So now let's add that account for you so that you have, okay, so let's give you an account. And for that, we do it in my SSH thing here. Okay, so add user. What username would you like? It was Rushid. Uh, Rushid 20, yeah, capital Rushid. H. If and I, I've never used capital H on a Unix okay. uh, or capital letter on a Unix login. I'm willing to try it. Oh. Let's see if it, how it was. So Rushi 20 like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Rushi cash, Rush cash, Rao. Okay. Empty for defaults. Login group that. Passes that. SH. Home directory, default permissions, no password-based authentication. No, we're not gonna lock out the account. Yes. Okay, so this means we've created the account, but you can't log in yet because we haven't added your public key yet. I, I, I sent you the public key via mail, so. Right, so I'm now going to go ahead and add that. First things first, I'm going to do an SSH keygen minus TED25519 so that you've got something. And then okay. what I'm checking now is to be sure that all right, and it does know about it. All right, so now I'm gonna put this off screen here because I don't wanna show you even your public key out to others in the recording. Uh, it should be harmless, but why risk it? Okay, so uh, public key and SSH into Mark Machine. There we go. Okay, so wrong window, try again. Okay. So Rushikesh, you should be able to log in now by doing SSH and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. So you should be able to log in to SSH minus P for port number. Capital P or? Uh, I think it's a lowercase P. Let me check. Okay. So, yes, lowercase p. So, SSH minus lowercase p, 44022. Okay. Space home.markweight.net. 
M-A-R-K-E-W-A-I-T-E. M-A-R-K-W-A-I-T-E, right. So no, no E be after Mark. Okay. Dot net. Correct. That's it. Uh huh. And if your username is Hrushi20 on your local computer, it should do it automatically. If it's oh, not Hrushi20, no. no. then you let's change the command line just a little. Then it's SSH minus P44022 mm. space mm. Hrushi20 at home.markweight.net. At home. Okay. And be sure you get the capitalization correct because uh, I think Unix logins are case sensitive. Oh, uh, I think I am in. Uh, do I open like port 8080 on my browser? Or? Uh, well, for right now, yes, I definitely see you're in. So now you can log off. Uh, because now we need to do the next step, which is configure that, do that same command, but use one, some additional arguments to cause it to create an SSH tunnel for you. So do I dominate this session? Yes. So in that session, I see that you're logged in right now from a, an IP address that starts with 122. Okay. Now I see you're logged off. So instead do in addition to the, the minus P argument that we had before, we're going to add one more argument, which is a, I think it's an minus L argument. Okay. Just a minute while I read it. I always, I always have to read this to, to remember how to do it. It is minus capital L. Mm -hmm. And now we're going from Okay, minus capital L. So, oh yes, 126, let's try this, 127.0.0.1 colon 8080. Colon 8080. Colon, mm -hmm. Again, Here, and, and maybe it's maybe it's best if I copy this all into a, into the chat window because it'll be to all of our benefit if we have a copy of it that way we can figure out what's going wrong if there's a problem so this one 8080 to mark dash mark dash pc2.markweight.net 8080 minus p44022 home.markweight.net. Okay, let me try that one myself just to see if it works the way I hoped it should. Okay, so for this, we need get bash. Okay. And I've got an outdated key in mine.
Hmm. Interesting. Ah, there we go. Deleted the wrong line. So I have to be sure I do the same thing I told you to do, log in as M weight. Okay, and now. Yep, that's right. Okay, so that syntax that I pasted is the correct syntax. No, I'll have to be adding my username right there uh yes oh oh yes sorry i did my username didn't i yes yes you'll have to use your username instead of mine um okay where did i i think i am in okay good so now on your computer in a local web browser open localhost colon 8080 oh yeah yeah i can see it Oh uh, yeah, it's coming. All right. So and so now I need to give you a login on that system. And do you prefer Frushi 20? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's give you a new account. And what I'll do is I'm going to send you a I will send you a single use URL. Uh, that contains the password. That way you, okay. you we don't have a big worry of the password that I generated for you. And uh, can you remove like the right access kind of things, you know, or something like that? So that I, don't that I, that I cannot. You'll just have to, if you destroy it, don't worry about it. If you destroy <laughs> it, it would be kind if you tell me that you destroyed it, <laughs> but it, it should be fully reconstructable. Everything is managed by code in it. Um, <laughs> Two years ago, Rishab didn't do any really serious damage. Other, you know, so you'll, you'll, you'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Truly, you don't need to worry. If you, if you do damage and don't tell me, that's okay too. It's just easier if you tell me I did damage, Mark. Okay. But even if you don't, periodically I throw it away and reconstruct it from, from scratch anyway. Okay. I guess you'll get to know, right? <laughs> even if I mess it up, so... Okay, so there is username. Let's get you a password. So while Mark is doing that, Rishikesh, I wanted to know uh, since you've uh, implemented uh, how to run these uh, maintenance tasks via the Git plugin, how what is your how are you thinking to test this on Mark's machine? I mean, do you have a plan on that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was, that was what I wanted to discuss next. So basically, I wrote all the, you know, maintain, I wrote the code for executing the maintenance tasks along with logs. Okay, mm -hmm. so now we have to see how efficient it is. That's the only way, like, the logs were written. So I thought if we run it on Mark's machine and then check the logs based on, I can add other logs, like when did the process start and when did it end to, you know, know whether you know how much time is taking good so Frushikesh, i'm actually going to paste the single use url into the chat session i know that's recorded and i know rishab will see it but i'm going to trust that you're going to be the one who clicks the link first so rishab this means you shouldn't click it first right that would be really rude 
And if if Rishab really does click it first, then Hrishikesh, <laughs> you tell me Rishab clicked it first. And we <laughs> okay. So if you'll click that link, that hyperlink, Rishikesh, yeah. what you'll see is it should open a web page, and on that web page will be a text string of more than 15 characters that is your password okay that is my password okay fine that's your password on that jenkins system and you can change it to whatever you'd like but okay fine. but that's the password that i set there if you do change it please let me know because i will store your user configuration as part of my configuration as code so that when i reset your okay. user will come back okay so did you have you been able to open up that password yet I opened the thing. Now, do I use it? Or? Yes, yes. So, so it use it to helps. log in as Rushi20. Okay, now I have to uh, like exit the session. Like I'm already logged in, right? So. Uh, no, no. When you say you're logged in, I think you may, you may be misunderstanding. You need to, or I'm not being clear enough. In your web browser, that's open oh. the localhost colon 8080. Okay. On that. And then log in. Oh. There, you need to do a login as Hrushi20 okay. with that password. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm logged in. Okay, so let me see if I can log in still. Yeah, and, and in all seriousness, if you do damage, if you accidentally delete my account, if you accidentally delete the entire thing, that's okay, don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm worried about that, so that's okay. No, no need to worry. Okay, so now uh, let me be sure that I've got a copy of your environment. Okay, there it is, so. And where is Hrushi 20? Ah, there we go. Okay. All right. So Hrushi 20. Okay, now where would it put, where does it put the password that we just assigned? Ah, there it is, the hashed password is there. Okay, good. So I have what I need. This is assuming that you don't choose to change your, your password from what I said. If, okay. if you do choose to change it, please let me know so that I can capture it correctly then. Sure. All right. So now in terms of you're welcome to upload your own copies of plugins, I have okay. to forewarn you that I periodically erase all the plugins that are there and reset them to versions that I'm using. So in your, in, as you're working through a development session, you should be sure that you start always by uploading the, the plugin versions you want to use. Okay. Don't, don't assume that um, if you had installed the one you wanted to use yesterday, that it's still there because frequently I will reset things. Does that sound all right to you? Yeah. Okay, and if we need, if we need, um, if you need access to a weekly version, the version that's running there isn't a long-term support version. If you need a weekly version, I can pretty easily start and stop weekly versions on other hosts. Okay. All right. Anything else we need to go over today? Oh, we didn't see the execution of the maintenance task once also, right? Like what oh. I have written. Like, can we do that once? Like, just Sure. Me. Well, actually, how about, do you want to do it? Let's have uh, you try to do it. Okay. Uh, do, like, wait, how do I do it? Like, do I share my screen or something? 
If you'd like to share your screen, that'd be great. If you don't want to share your screen, you can just execute it from your web page. So on your web page, on your web page, just open up dash, go to the top level Jenkins dashboard. Okay. In the maintenance folder. Yeah. There's a job named Git Maintenance Exploration. Yeah. Open that job and click the configure link. Okay. And you'll see as you scroll through it, it lists um, the steps that we were running. Oh, okay. So now if you save that. Yeah. And press build now. Yes. I clicked on it. Okay. And I see build 11 running. And when I look in Blue Ocean, it will show me that it's finished and some of them passed and some of them failed. Oh, that's interesting. The Windows one failed. Because apparently I did something wrong. Unknown option. Oh, apparently I need to learn how to write bash scripts or not bash script, batch files. Let's fix my mistake. I love Windows. Okay, so. And it still fails. What am I doing wrong? Could not instantiate. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Fushikesh. You've just detected a that on the Windows computer, okay. it uses a minimum version of Git that so that so that it doesn't have all of the parts and pieces. And that means that documentation for Git maintenance is not available. Oh, so Git okay. maintenance minus minus help fails. Yes. So you'll have but to do a little more exploring. Okay. Git maintenance I'll, I'll, seems I'll to be recognized, but the but help doesn't seem to fit, be there. Oh, so okay. we may have to do something different, like try a command git maintenance prefetch or git maintenance. What let's see, what are some git maintenance commands? List is oh, there I'll list? Commit graph. Commit graph oh, commit graph. Okay, so commit. All right, so I save that. Build now. So here comes number 13. No, it still fails. Hmm. Well, so you can certainly do exploration I'll, like this. Are yes, you comfortable yes, yes. doing that? Yes, I'll yes. I'll let you I'll do the exploration and I'm going to go to sleep. Okay. Oh, uh, Before that, I have like a few more questions if you don't mind. Oh, go ahead. Yes. What other questions do you have? I have, uh, I've written the logic for logging uh, the files. Okay. And uh, uh, then I realized that, you know, there are a few logs which are written every minute because the cron scheduler runs every minute. And I think that would have an impact on the performance because when I was only using the software, I could feel it very slow on my computer. So are there any you know, like suggestions? On sure. So one suggestion is for that kind of logging, be sure that you set the level to, to something like fine so that yeah. by default, users don't get it. Oh, and it doesn't matter if I keep logging that internally, right? Well, would it be safe? Yeah, when you something? when you say when you say logger dot log at level fine and then give a message, it will not place anything in the log unless that log is enabled for fine logging. Okay. So it'll be silent, even though you said write a log message, unless that has been explicitly configured to take that level of logging. Okay. Did, did that answer your question? Yes, yes, yes. 
So okay. I added it as a fine, uh, in, you know, the fine level. So I think. Oh, yeah, well, so then it shouldn't have been writing, but you say it was writing. No, it wasn't writing, but I could feel my system slow, you know, because I don't know oh. why. Yeah. Oh, well, so as far as that, well, so, so there, there are some techniques to keep the cost of logging as low as possible. And if you want to do a little bit of studying about those, Java logging has some techniques that will let you, by choosing which which method you call, you can reduce the expense of a, a log message that is not being actually written to any log. Okay. Uh, I've I've I, never had to use those techniques, so I don't I don't know them, but I know they exist. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll look into that. Okay. Okay. And one last thing, can we try executing the maintenance task like the entire thing on your computer once? Like, oh sure, you bet. So you want to you want to upload a should we upload a version of the plugin and watch it run? Yeah, the latest one itself. There is a failing test, but I think it should run successfully. Yeah, let's do it. So to be sure that you have a record of it, let's turn on screen sharing. Uh, you should see a terminal window. Do you see a terminal window? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so let's put that away. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go here, bring up this thing. Okay, so here is my Jenkins controller. Mm -hmm. And I assume that's readable enough for you? Yes. Okay, so now let's go on ci.jenkins.io. We need the Git client plugin, most recent build of your change. So this one, um, I think PR862 is the one you needed, right? Yeah, get yeah. cache maintenance. Okay, so let's download that. I think you would need only the Git plugin, right? Like, uh, see, I don't know. Did you, you, did, you didn't make any dependencies on your new version of the Git plugin or Git client plugin? No, there are no dependencies. I added the, you know, incremental build version into it. I think now you have updated it, so I'm not sure uh, if it's going to run or not. Okay, well, so let's let's try it and see. And so let's take download, we'll download from CI, Git plugin, and we want to see your build, which should be pull request 1277 maybe? Yes, good, okay. So we download this one. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to go to manage Jenkins. Oh, 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 I've got an even better technique. Oh yes, sorry, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show the best way to do this. Forgive my mistake here. The best way to do this is we go to ci.jenkins.io, Git client plugin on the branch that we need. This one, I'm going to copy this URL. And then on the Jenkins instance here, I'm going to manage Jenkins, manage plugins, advanced, and notice this very nice URL field to deploy a plugin. Okay. Notice that it says deploy plugin and I can enter a URL, deploy. So it's now downloading that version of the Git client. Okay, now I'm gonna do that one more time with the Git plugin. So go to the Jenkins job that has exactly the pull request that I wanna take. It was 1277, right? Yeah. Okay, and we copy that, paste it here. So again, that's deploy plugin. Here I've pasted in the path to the, that one. And now it says I need to restart. So I'm going to go ahead and restart by placing the magic command in the URL restart. And here it goes. Now we'll see uh, if it comes we... back. Don't you have to update the version of the Git client plugin in the Git plugin, like the incremental build? You know, that's that. that's what I just did. Is I okay. just uploaded 
So what I did was I, this is the incremental version of the Git plugin. And I told Jenkins, download that one. Okay. And if I'm lucky, this is going to just work. We'll see. Uh, we, I was telling to do this just so that we are all on the same page, like how things are executing so that, you know, uh -huh. uh, we'll have a clear picture of what things, like what exactly is happening. So. So let's take a quick look here. See if there's anything in the logs that causes us worry. I don't see anything there. Looks pretty good. All right, so now if, if that was successful, I would expect us to, in Manage Jenkins, find a new thing, which is... Yeah, the Git maintenance. That's there. Uh, you obviously see it, and I'm not seeing it. Oh, there it is. Good. Okay. Yes. So, Git so, maintenance. Can you, uh, like, uh, you know, open the terminal and, you know, see where exactly these caches are present? Like, sure. the path so that you know we can look whether the maintenance command is running or not. Mm -hmm. You bet. So here are some caches. Okay, I think it'll run on all caches. Uh, uh, can we Caches. see how, like, can we see like any command where, you know, we know something is written to the .git folder? Because when I run the maintenance task, a lock file is added, so. Okay, so ask your question again. Uh, when I run the maintenance command, a log file is written to one of the caches. So if is there any chance where we can keep watching that so that when we run the maintenance co a command, you know, that thing. Sure. So how that. about, how about let's look at one of the large directories. Wait a sec. That says it's non-trivial size. Huh. Uh, you have to go into that directory and then there's a dot git. Oh, yeah, oh dot, my, yeah. that is really strange. Yeah, okay. these are the caches. Okay. So they're not maintained as bare repositories. Oh, that's interesting. All right. Yes. Well, I did so not now know if that. You go, yeah. So now if you go into the dot git directory and keep looking at it, like uh -huh. there's, uh, you know, the watch command. Ah, uh, watch. Okay every every once if you do it like 1.0.1 second i'm not sure if it finishes very fast like the maintenance stuff oh you think it will be you think it will be removed again so the log file yeah yes 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 okay i think it will be particularly if i run gc it's going to take more than two seconds to complete uh yeah I'm not sure if it would run in the same order as the thing displayed in your terminal. Yeah, you. and, and I'm okay with that, right? I think, okay, save. And now yeah, if execute. I say execute. Yeah, it should be executing. Okay. Can you look into the logs of, I think I added logs, right? So I'm not sure if it would log. So let's see what's written to the, if anything's written to the log here. I don't see anything in the log here. So let's look at Jenkins logs. So manage Jenkins system log. Okay, so now let's add a new log recorder and give me a, a good choice of name. Um, I think a task executor or a task scheduler, you know. All right, so I need a fully qualified path. So let's go find it.
something like, well, let's find some place where you wrote a logger. Or I think a task executor would have one. Like. Okay, so, all right, so task executor rather than maintenance task configuration? Yeah, yeah, this is only during saving the, uh, you know, data into the, into okay. Jenkins, so. So in maintenance UI, Task executor. Task executor. Okay, so we need Jenkins plugins git maintenance task executor. Let's borrow this. Jenkins dot plugins dot git dot maintenance dot task executor. Hmm. Uh, 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 yeah. Jenkins dot Back to where I was. It is Jenkins plugins. Oh, here we go. We'll cheat and just take that. Oh, oh, this is just the name. Sorry, I need to read more carefully. Oh. Now we add a, a logger, no. and this one yeah. will do the, the lookup for us. Yeah, task executor. And, and we would all, like. All finest oh okay you really want all uh, yeah very good all right okay so now let's execute again i think it's execute it's, it's executing. oh oops okay save yeah. now Turn we'll have ahead. to wait we'll have to wait until the clock when your computer turns 24 like that's the next time it's going to run the maintenance does so it it will run every minute right yeah yeah okay All right. oh i see what you're saying so we've got to wait here okay so it's doing some work in this one or it did some work in that one Is it very slow or something? Is it because no. we are crunching it or some, you know, running? Well, the... let's let's go see this one. I think let's go look at this and see if we can see evidence that it did something. Ah, uh, yeah. So where was our watch? Here was our watch. Uh, no, no, no. Can you like go to that uh, for dot get folder in that uh, cache and you know just look into all the yeah all the files you know dot get can you like go into the yeah and okay. then I now here when you go into objects right I think like do you have a tree command like to see everything in a tree view like that no uh, ls like, tree like. So you're looking for a recursive listing or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, ls minus big R, I think does it like that. Uh, yeah, like can you do it in the dot get like directory, like the main directory? Uh-huh. Yeah, so, but there we would be finding our prefetch. Like, okay, it's not completely showing the thing. No. I think it's only showing directories, right? We need to, I won't like, can you see the files as well? Um, so is that what you were looking for? Okay. Is there anything in the pack file, like the objects and then pack file, you know, I think this. So it looks like this one is empty. Let's empty, go back here exactly. and, and let's check to see if it's got something else to tell us. So let's grab, here we go. So we've got some more that are making progress. This one has been processed and I need to get that extra text. Just a minute. I was in the wrong directory. Okay. Oh, no, there's no dot did in this directory. Okay, so it was process. It says it processed something, and 
but the directory it was operating on was empty. So there was nothing to do. Oh, can we see any other, you know, cache just in case? Sure, hang on. But it looks like it's only operating for right now on the TMP suffix directory names. And as far as I know, they're all empty. Yeah, so none of them have a .git directory in them. Okay. Now I could remove those TMP directories, they're empty, mm. like that. Mm. And can we uh, now check it? Like, these would have it, right? They, they should, yes. These all should have content. So let's... So we'll have, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they all look like they've got content. So now, now we want to, let's, whoops. Okay, so here it is gathering the logs, gathering. Okay, so let's clear that log because it was only doing the TMPs. Oh, we'll have to wait till no one minute. And now, so, okay, so this shows, this is telling you with the terminate button that it's actually running. Oh, uh, yeah. If you click on the terminate, it'll stop running. So. Okay, so let's try the stop. And let's just do GC. Okay, wait. I... Or is, is that okay? You okay if we try just a garbage collection? Yeah, but I think I have, I realize there's a bug right now. Okay, because I think I didn't clear the queue when I do click on the terminate button. So I think the previous ah. task would be in the- <laughs> Okay, know, well, we'll see. This, this should tell us something, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're at 29, so we wait till 30. And Rishab, you're welcome to disconnect. You don't have to, to continue with this. We're just, we're experimenting now. So you probably have work to do and a, an employer that needs your attention, et cetera. I will disconnect in some time. Okay. So, uh, so do we, when you clear the share, the schedule that you need to deselect uh, an individual task because you, you still, when, when you're clearing. So if you just want to choose one, Mm -hmm. you actually You'll have to deselect. Ah, yeah. right. I see. So it, it wasn't enough yeah, yeah, to yeah. clear the schedule. I really needed to say, hey, blank this. And you'll have to click the save button as well, you know. Right. Save it into right. The... That makes sense. Uh, I can improve the UI. Like, this was just an initial version. So, mm -hmm. so if I deselect a task, um, the schedule should also uh, should also be removed, right? I mean, I don't need to deselect and remove this schedule as well, right? Oh. So I would assume that if I deselect, it will no longer be active. But I don't want to actually lose the uh, um, the schedule. Uh, Do I? I would think I, I want to keep it. Yeah, it would be saved internally, but it it is disabled right now. If you take it, like check it, it would run. Okay, so I'm going to, and are we at a point where I could say terminate or? All right, here we go. So now why is it locking those temp directories again? Oh, because they're back. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Okay. And is it because of the logic of, you know, getting all the caches on the Jenkins controller? I, I don't know why it's using a temp directory, but I assume there's some logic behind it. I just don't know what that logic might be. I haven't looked. I, I don't remember. Okay.
I mean, if I, I think if I go into that directory, and do a get status, it will tell me there's not a repository there. Whereas yeah. if I go to this one, there is a repository there. So are we creating some kind of temp whenever I'm trying to read the caches, something like that? I And that I don't know. I'm not sure what's causing it to be created, but something is causing it to be created. It could just be um, the, the branch source branch source is periodically generating that thing it could be pipeline that's doing it there could be lots of things that are, are creating it oh so then i'll have to again look into you know not using the temp directory or something like that well i would say just go ahead and, and run your action if the directory is empty i would assume the action will fail okay. you try to do maintenance on something that's not not got anything in it and it, it won't it won't because find any, my any work computer, to do yeah on my, my on my machine it's running i didn't find any temp so ah the, interesting Okay, so this is a well, a well garbage collected. And this is from March 12. We're now in June, right? June, yeah. Hmm. Why would that be from that long ago? When this thing I thought was reset long ago. Hmm. So Rushikesh, ah, okay, we've got, no, it's still processing the temp directories. Can you it's, tell? Well, and look at what it's doing. It's doing a maintenance run. Now, okay, I have to ask a different question. I thought mm -hmm. that command line git on Debian 11 did not have, what, what did our table tell us? Was did it tell us that um, that there was that get Debian? Oops, wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Debian eleven has the git maintenance command, but cannot do prefetch. Okay, so it can run git maintenance, but what is this running? This is running loose objects. So this this or this is the issue because I told right I didn't clear the maintenance queue when I clicked the terminal button. So that's mm -hmm. why the, even though we didn't configure the loose objects, it's it's getting executed. Okay, so well, I'll yeah I'll have to fix that. Well, and let's take a look at this. So if if I do that command. inside oh no wrong one where was it it was is it this one no no it was where did it where did it, where did it, it was it in the it maintenance, was maintenance folder yeah and then just scroll a bit get me yeah. there it is okay thank you all right thanks very much Okay, so if I put in here, instead of maintenance minus minus help, if I do this, maintenance run task equals loose object. It would run, right? Yeah, it would run. Well, and let's let's try it and see, because this isn't very expensive to try it. And considering how small that repository is, it shouldn't be too terribly harmful. Oh, no, that's and we just cloned it, right? So I think there wouldn't be any loose objects. as well. There shouldn't be, right? Yeah. Okay, so it says on 2.17 that git maintenance is not a git command. 
good. Now, if we look at Debian testing, this one says get maintenance run task equals loose objects. And it succeeded. Yeah. Okay, now what about Debian 11? Because that's where the controller is running. Uh, and that it succeeded. Run. Yes. So. Okay, good. So the controller should be able to do this. So it should be able to run a git maintenance run task loose objects. Hmm. Now, in this particular repository, there'll be no loose objects, right? So it should be very fast. So this one is Ubuntu 20. This one is Ubuntu 20. Yeah, good. So we're we're seeing we're seeing I think the results we hope for in that job. Now I don't know if this log has more things to tell us. It's doing commit graph and iterating over the temp temp folders still. So Hushikesh, are you comfortable that this gives you a way to continue exploring and to see yeah. things on, on this computer? Oh, uh, yeah. This is the same computer, right? Like It is. This is Mark yeah. PC2, yes. Okay. Yeah, I think this would be more beneficial for me. I can check it out. All right. Yeah. And I apologize. I really do need to get some sleep now. Yeah, fine. Yeah, sure. Sorry, my bad. All right. Oh, no. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. And it will be tomorrow before this is done processing. And I'll upload the recording when it is. Yeah. Thank you.